Hello friends, good morning, welcome to The Lug Life, and welcome back to another day in Fiji. Sherry and I just woke up. We are about to make coffee, get our day started. Sherry Beth is brushing her teeth back over here. And uh, we've been starting our day with coffee the exact same way in our room. And it's a little bit different than the way we start our day back home. Let me show you. So the coffee that they gave us here in our room are like these packets of instant coffee. And at first we were like, oh no, this is gonna be terrible. Uh, but we tried it the first morning also. Don't mind the Bacardi and vodka. Um, we tried it the first morning and we were like, actually, that wasn't too bad. So we've got our kettle here and we've just been making our morning coffee using these instant coffee grounds, some of this 100% pure Fiji sugar and a little bit of cream. Is it the best coffee in the world? Absolutely not. Does it do the job? Yes, and that's what matters. So let's get our day started. Just like that, we've got coffee. And then we bring our coffees outside and this is where we have breakfast. Every single morning. We actually haven't been down to have like their buffet breakfast at all no. because this is perfect. Now we are gonna need to go to the market again because this is our last banana and these are our last two. We actually don't know what these are. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing them at the store and thinking, oh, those look good. And I feel like it was some kind of a custard bread or something like that. So we're gonna give it a whirl, but definitely need to go to the store, stock up on breakfast stuff. Okay, the bread's really good. Inside there's like this, almost like custard filling, delicious. And also our friends are back. We've been joined by birds every morning for breakfast. All right, I'm dressed ready for the day. And one thing you may notice about me right away um, is that I'm not wearing a hat because one of the places we're going today is a local traditional Fijian village. And we've read a lot of different places that men, when you enter the village, take off your hat as a sign of respect or don't wear a hat at all. So to be respectful, not wearing a hat. Also, for the first time this trip, wearing long pants. And you can see Sherry Beth wearing a dress. For a similar reason of the hat, um, women covering shoulders, uh, men and women covering knees with either pants, dress, or a sarong, which neither of us have, um, when we go to the village, but also when we go to the Hindu temple a little bit later. Now, we have heard that they do have sarongs and wraps that you can borrow if you have your shoulders exposed, that kind of thing, but we thought, let's just go into it prepared. Um, again, we're just trying to be respectful, trying to honor culture, trying to honor uh, the locations that we visit today. Um, the places we are going, just so you know, is there are four of them we're going. We are going to the Hindu temple, which is the largest in the South Pacific. Um, we've, driven by, we've driven by it a couple times and it is beautiful. The colors are crazy, cannot wait to see it. Um, and then we are going to uh, basically a, an orchid farm. It's not a farm, it's like an orchid garden that was started by actor Raymond Burr, strangely enough. I think it's called the Garden of the Sleeping Giants or something like that. More info on that later. Uh, then we are going to a traditional Fijian village where we're gonna get to see a little bit of the culture, kind of the way that Fijians live, right? Because here's the reality. We are staying at the Double Tree Resort by Hilton. This is not traditional Fiji, right? And we know that. Um, but we wanted to make sure we got off our resort, got into culture a little bit, got to see a little bit of what life is like here. Uh, when people visit Alaska, that's one of the things that we encourage them to do, right? Get off the cruise ship, get off the tour bus, go see the real Alaska. We wanted to make sure we did a little bit of that while we were here in Fiji as well. And then the last place we're visiting are some of the local markets, uh, food markets, vendor markets, and just kind of see some of the local craftspeople. So I'm excited about that. Um, we are also bringing something with us. One of the things that we've heard is that when you visit a local village, it's kind of customary to bring a gift for the local school or for the chief. And we are bringing crayons, construction paper, some little bouncy balls, just some things that hopefully the little, uh, the local kids will be able to enjoy and use. We were commenting that when we woke up, it smelled a little bit smoky outside, which it hasn't the last few days. Um, but while we were on the boat ride yesterday, we did see what looked like a couple of fires burning on surrounding islands. So we're wondering if that could be it. All right, we just got in our bus for today. It is currently just Sherry and I, but we're picking up three more people.
So stop number one for us is the temple. You can see here they have a sign that has the temple rules, clothing that's allowed, clothing that's not allowed, and then some of the other rules and regulations over here. So it does say that photography, videography is prohibited inside the temple and so i will video what i can from around the grounds but obviously going to be very respectful to not photo and video where we're not supposed to all right so we are allowed to take pictures videos all outside all around but it's when we go in the temple obviously no pictures and sherry already pictures of flowers we did have to take our shoes off as well. So obviously Sherry and I, not Hindu, don't know a lot about Hinduism. Um, however, at the front where we uh, kind of checked in, they did have these plates you could purchase that had different fruits on them, different things on them. And then they have this, it appears to be like a path. People are walking around and kind of laying different things in here. Also, apparently we're supposed to go to Melbourne, Australia because the family, yeah, the family we connected with yesterday uh, was from Melbourne. The family that is on the tour with us today. Our neighbors at the resort. Our neighbors at the resort from Melbourne. It's like, Melbourne. what in the world? <laughs> Here you can see some of the detail, the paintings on the ceilings. And that was one of the things that was actually really interesting to learn as we were doing our research on coming to Fiji is that there is a huge Indian population here in Fiji and I didn't know that. So a very large Hindu population here, hence the reason they have such a large temple. to the temple and there's no cameras allowed in there so we're going to shut the camera off for a minute and we will meet you on the other side. That was really beautiful inside just everywhere like every little corner every piece of ceiling. The ceiling is beautiful. Yeah. Really pretty mm -hmm. and it's so interesting to me because in some ways a lot of it reminds me of like the approach to even with like stained glass right you think of like old Christian churches who use the environment to tell the story. It was a very similar experience in there. And then it's not just the main temple building, there's also these uh, kind of smaller outbuildings as well. So walking around here, we're noticing that there's a lot of um, rituals and that kind of stuff that is like this right here that's happening. Um, and I wish I knew the symbolism, but I don't. So that's something I would actually like to look into because it's, it's fascinating, it's interesting. It is fascinating. We're kind of standing outside here watching. So we actually just got a tour of the temple by the main priest and it was pretty fascinating because he walked us around everything and just explained like the different symbolism, explained a lot of the questions that we had. I thought that was a pretty cool experience. Mm -hmm. So we're out walking around, we got a little bit of time before we need to meet our driver to go to the next market. And so we're walking through kind of the downtown main shopping area of Nandi Town, just uh, checking stuff out. Not gonna lie, I have no idea what Rupp's Big Bear is, but I definitely wanna go. Crossing the road's gonna be fun. Sherry, are you ready to run? We've got this. Okay. We've got this. <laughs> we might not have this. Before we get back on the bus, we wanna grab some water. Um, we have Island Chill water. Got our waters, now back to the tour bus. So our next stop here is at the farmer's market. This was actually one of the things I was most looking forward to checking out while we were here. Lots of food, lots of produce, and look over here at the flowers. Sherry is going to be in absolute heaven. Oh my God. So people talk about the flowers at Pike Market in Seattle. These are way prettier. Yeah, Sherry's absolutely in heaven. It's so <laughs> you can see it looks like we have a couple of food stalls here up top. And then I just want to give you kind of an overview of this place. So we're actually planning on buying some produce for the rest of our trip to keep in our room. Look at how awesome this looks. Pineapples four for five and that's four for five Fiji. So basically four pineapples for roughly 
roughly $2.50. Uh, can I move here yet? <laughs> All right, so it was about, it was bound to happen while we're in Fiji. We're trying kava for the very first time. And they were showing that this is actually the kava, the plant, the root, and it's ground up into this powder here. This is the back to mix kava. Okay. With the powder in there, two, two tablespoons per Ah. And then with the normal tea water, this is how we mix kava. Hmm. Ah. Bula. Good. I didn't know what it would taste like. Sherry's very first kava. Got to go the whole thing. Good job, Sherry. And he was saying that it's, um, whereas alcohol makes you talk too much, kava does the opposite, chills you out. All right, so I think we are going to get some, maybe some bananas. Sherry, what else should we get? Maybe some oranges. Should we get some oranges? Some grapes. We've got a whole bunch of fresh produce, hopefully to get us through next several days of our trip. Yep. What a great stop this was here at the Nandi Farmer's Market. Uh, we were able to get a whole bunch of produce, able to meet some really wonderful people, and it's fun to see this whole operation. Just so you know, all the produce we bought, we bought bananas, we bought oranges, we bought pears, we bought grapes. Uh, it was 24 Fijian dollars, basically $11, $12 American. Okay, so our next stop is the Garden of the Sleeping Giant. This is the orchid garden, um, again, that actor Raymond Burr, I believe, started. And they call it the Garden of the Sleeping Giant because the mountain up here is the Sleeping Giant. It looks like a giant laying on his back. Commonly known as the ceiling wax palm or lipstick palm. Yeah, we call it the lipstick palm because of the color. It is uh, considered to be the most beautiful and aesthetic palm around the world. Look at all of the orchids. Unbelievable. Look at how beautiful this is. And I think it's really interesting because they're just like, the roots are just out and displayed. So pretty. commonly known as the sunset bell plant. She said there's over 2,000 types of orchids here. However, you'll never see them all because they don't all bloom at the same time, right. which makes sense. Yeah. Look at how beautiful this is. There's like netting all above you with like the flowering tree. So we just learned that vanilla, part of the orchid family. And so this is a vanilla plant. Very interesting. You can see orchids just everywhere. And we just kind of came out into this area with a view of the mountain in front of us. Just palms all around us, trees all around us. It's crazy how lush this is. So our guide was just telling us that this giant palm right here, its leaves always face to the east and west to like absorb the sunlight, which used to help travelers navigate. We didn't need to buy bananas at the produce market. <laughs> we could have just shimmied up there and got those. Mm -hmm. This place is not real. <laughs> like, look at, it reminds me of Tiana. Oh, it's so pretty. And then there is a, they call it the jungle walk. There's a trail that does like a big loop, kind of all up in there. There's like a little hut over here I want to go explore. Wait a second. There's hammocks in the hut. You. Oh, I just tripped on a palm branch. Don't mind me. What in the world? This. How is this place real? We're not sure what's going on, but this tree, like back over here, it almost sounds like there's something up there like knocking things down because like little 
Hold on, I gotta go look. To this tree right here, because there are just things almost constantly falling off it. And it sounds like there's little, I, sound, I don't know, it doesn't feel like leaves. It feels like they're like little nuts or something falling off. I wanna see if I can find one. This, this is what it's like. It's like little pieces of, I don't know, is that like the shell of something? I'm so confused. So I just walked up to this little area to give you a little better overview. The hammocks down there, you can see Sherry sitting over there. Just look at this, you guys. And as cool as hammocks are, I think I found something even more cool. Swings. I could use a little WD-40, but other than that, this is super peaceful and amazing. This is a really cool experience, just basically feeling like you are alone in a jungle, like a tropical, tropical paradise. Can't really hear many people. Oh, look how cute Sherry is down there. You guys see her back there, her little floral dress? So those are things that were falling out of the tree. Mm -hmm. It's so strange. It's like hard. Yeah. It's almost like a coconut husk. Yeah. Also, this is a demonstration of a lovo, which is a Fijian earth oven. Basically, like, put the food in there, it would cook, take all the rocks off. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see this. It says Bula. And when the wind blows, oh gosh. Sure, I almost got pegged in the head with those. When the wind blows, like all the leaves come down and it's just so beautiful. This is, this is one of the more naturally stunning places I've ever been. Yes, yes. You can tell that they do very little to like tourist it up really. Like it's just, this is the setting and we're gonna, we're gonna die right now. You think we're gonna die? <laughs> Well, those things are falling out of the tree, though. Yeah, we might die. But, what a place to die. <laughs> so, Sharon and I were just talking about how good of a deal that this tour is. This tour ended up being um, about a hundred American dollars for the day. And it's supposed to be a four to five hour tour. I think ours is going to be five hours plus, honestly. Uh, and so, we've gone to all but one of the places. We're going to a local village next and last. And so far, like, I just love that we've gotten to do so much. Uh, trying to figure out our way, navigate our way here ourselves if we had to rent a car. We could have done it, but this, definitely easier. All right, so this is funny to me. That looks like an orchid that is screaming. It looks like a butterfly. There's wings, and that's its mouth, and it's just, like, totally screaming. And I don't remember what she called these, but they look like giant fruit. However, she said they don't eat them. She said the inside is kind of like a watermelon, but they smell terrible. She said mostly what they use them for would be bowls, cups, musical instruments. They are very hard. Also, going into certain buildings in Fiji, not always easy for me. I have to remember to duck. However, Sherry, not really having a problem. So I would say if you are a flower fan, an orchid fan, just a fan of like naturally beautiful spaces, um, the Garden of the Sleeping Giant, for sure, a place to visit if you were coming in Fiji. All right, we are saying goodbye to the Garden of the Sleeping Giant. That actually was really nice. They came and gave us some like fresh juice. We got to hang out and end our visit that way. So when we first entered the village, there are a bunch of tables set up outside with just a bunch of the local ladies selling things that they, they've made. And so now we are about to do our village tour, right this way. They had a stop over in Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, then Fiji. They're very good navigator. They used to start the moon in the sun and the wind. Our guide was just telling us that there are about a thousand people who live in this village. There's one chief, and they believe that this village is actually the first village where Fijians arrived when this area was settled. Now he's showing us the drum. Nowadays, we no longer use it for communication. You just have to text your message with your phone. So we're still using it for gathering, just gathering, village gathering ceremonies. There's three separate drums in our village, one for our chief, one for our village, and this for our local church. Nothing should be above the knees. You have to cover the shoulder, the chest, and the back. 
You're not allowed to scream shouting in the village. Loud music is not allowed. It's okay to have music but keep the volume in the house. And also we're not allowed to have alcohol. It's not allowed in the village. You can have it outside the village boundary or in town. But here in the village it's not allowed. So this is where the warriors are buried. This is a monument to them. And it's interesting because at top you can see like the you can see the cross up there, but the thing that it crosses on top of symbolizes the end of cannibalism and the birth of Christianity. So you can see a lot of the houses are modernized here, with the exception of one. And it's the only remaining hut left, and that is where the chief lives. Really amazing. So what happened that day, the priest, he dreamt it a few weeks before the missionary arrived, the priest he saw in his vision. He visionized that when he went to bed and he saw himself standing in front of the beach of the sea and looking towards Nandi Bay in Denarau and he saw the ship was coming in. Before the missionary came over, the priest saw it. So he saw the missionary was coming and she bring good things to the village. He saw the, the light coming with the ship was too really bright. So he couldn't stand the light because the light was too bright. Now we are going into the John Wesley, love the spelling, church. One of the things that Joe was telling us is that even just the arrangement of the church, so the women would be at one side, men would be on the other, here on the flat floor, and then kids choir kind of up here on the floor. But then you can see it's elevated back here. So the one step up, these would be like the grandmothers on this side, where it's the step up over there would be the grandfathers on that side. And then back here in the corner, another step up, is the chief's chair. We just dropped off the other tour guests at their resort. Sherry's up there, snacking on some cookies. <laughs> now, the driver's taking us back to the double tree. As we head back to our resort, we are passing the temple one more time where our day started. Back at the resort, the boat just left, so we'll wait a few minutes and get the next one. Well, for the first time in our Fiji vacation, it is raining. Well, it's sprinkling. Back to our room. A beautiful, fresh flower on our bed. Got all of our fruit rinsed off, washed, put up there for us to eat over the next several days. I also saw that they put this little thing there. It's pretty cool because I feel like every single day, also Sherry's already changed. <laughs> you were like, get me out of this dress. Um, I feel like every day there's just these little touches of stuff. Yep, I love it. Which we did not expect at all. Right, no, because like, there's one of the things that we read here in the room was that they'll do room service every third day. So that's what we were expecting, so which is so fine for us. Every day. Yeah. So, which is fine. Not but complaining. Nope. So as we get ready to end this video, uh, we wanted to just kind of give you our thoughts on today's tour, how today mm -hmm. went. Sherry Bath. Yeah. Um, so this was about a hundred American dollars for what ended up being about six hours. Mm -hmm. And we went to, of course, multiple different places. What were your thoughts on the tour? Um, I really liked it. I would do it again. Um, I 
I liked kind of being able to walk around the temple and then have one of the priests come out and kind of explain what things meant. Yeah, I like that um, too. I like that. Um, I don't know, the village tour was really cool and kind of the way that they all like help each other out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the things that Joe, our tour guide, um, well, he told us his name. He was like, just call me Joe. Um, <laughs> and he was kind of explaining that everyone in the village, again, they have a thousand people in their village under that chief. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember what he said. I think he said it was like 200 and some families. 250 homes with multiple families oh, living in. That's right. That's what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and he said everyone has a role that, you know, some people work in hotels and resorts and they bring their money back. Some people, you know, do the tours like he was doing. Some people are unemployed. And he kind of explained how he lost his job during COVID. Right. And so he said those in the village that are unemployed, they either farm or fish. Or run the tours or yep. whatever. Yep. They, everyone does something to help support the village. Mm -hmm. And they were saying, so when we first walked in, there were kind of all those tables um, selling jewelry and whatever. And they said that all of that, like you're not buying it from that person, you're buying it for the village. And That's so right. all of the money that they make from any of those tables all goes into one pot. Yeah, it's all combined. Mm -hmm. um, it was just, that was a really neat experience. Yeah. Um, the orchid farm was beautiful. Yes, it just was. like, uh, again, lush, tropical, perfect environment. Mm -hmm. um, the, if I had one knock against this tour, when they dropped us off downtown for like shopping um it was to a store here called jack's and jack's is it's kind of like a chain gift shop mm -hmm. and that's kind of how it feels it's the touristy kind of stuff the plastic keychains and whatever and we have one of those in our resort <laughs> now they to be fair jack's does have some amazing woodwork and some different yeah. stuff like that yeah um but it was kind of like that was the only thing that was kind of like, oh man, I want to shop anywhere, like literally but here. <laughs> right. Um, Don't take me to the tourist trap, take me to like... Somewhere real. Somewhere like real So stuff, but, I think yeah. later on in our trip, we're gonna try to go to maybe a handicraft market we saw downtown. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the tour for me was a home run. Like I would do yeah. it again in a second. Yeah. Uh, the things that we saw were actually really spread out like distance wise. Mm -hmm. So I just feel like if we were to take taxis or have had a rental car, it would have it would have been more than a hundred dollars in headaches right just trying to find the spaces and in actual taxi fare i think like we would have spent yep. more than that so good deal yep so friends that's what today's vlog was our day out exploring um the discover what was it the discover nandi tour yep. so love you guys so much and we're going to put the phone down not camera. the phone the camera <laughs> um put the camera down and just enjoy our evening together and yep. tomorrow as we're filming, this is our anniversary. Yeah. And you guys are not coming with us. <laughs> so we love you. We're not you. vlogging that day. We're not vlogging that day. Um, we're not even going to be on social media that day. We're going to just take a whole break. So we love you. And we'll pick up the camera on I, sometime soon in Fiji. <laughs> Bye, friends.